Hi, welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 112A. I'm Cam and this is Julie. This week's Torah portion, I mean, we are so close to the end of Deuteronomy. It's amazing. Yay. We are in Deuteronomy 29.10 through 31.29. Um, one of the things that I noticed this week was, you know, it's really like gearing you up for, okay, this is the end. Because 30, chapter 32 is the end. Wait, That's wait, how I feel it right now. That's not true. It goes to 34. But anyway, it is. It's it's really close. Because we're about to go into the feast. Right, right. Right. And then that, it's funny. It's just, I don't know. In a way, it should be the coming down, right? Because it's the end. Uh-huh. But it it's really not, isn't. Because you know yeah. it's coming to a new beginning. Yes. So, that's why I said I feel like that right now. Right. With everything going on. I feel like, oh, it's, we're gearing up for something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Isn't that the way we should probably actually see, you yes. know, as we talk about the end of the world, which there really isn't the end of the world. Okay? Right, right, right. It's just right. changing. So that's probably how we should really see it, knowing, yeah, things are going to change, but we're on the right side of the coin. Right. Oh, May we please be on the right side of the coin. Right. If not, we're, we're at least in the flipping side trying to get on that. Right. As you say, going through. We're closer yes, to we're the we're closer to arriving, the going through. Right. Arriving, so, arriving to yeah. the right. So it should be a joyous event. Yes, there's sorrow, but but really being able to cling to the word, the faithfulness of the word. And on that note, let's just jump into the middle of the passage and look at this. We see that the Lord talks about he's never going to forsake, right? Mm -hmm. And that's in Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For it is the Lord your God who is going out with you. He does not fail you nor forsake you. All right. Now I'm leaving there and I'm going to 31 verse 17. Now, granted, in what we just read, the Lord's going with them. They're going into land, and this mm -hmm. is, you know, it's all good. Now we're in 17, and he says, then my just, this is because they're not now behaving. Okay. okay? They're in the land, he's telling them, you're going to go in, and you're just basically going to forget, and who cares about what I said? You're going right. to do what right, you right. want and go after other gods. He says, then my, desire, uh, my displeasure shall burn against you in that day, and I shall forsake them and hide my face from them, and they shall be consumed. And many evils and diseases shall come upon them, and it shall be said in that day, Is it not because our Elohim is not in our midst that these evils have come upon us? So I was reading and I thought, well, wait a minute. You just said you're not going to fail or forsake. Right. Yet here you're like, well, I'm forsaking you. Yeah. I'm leaving you. And then I went, oh, because I thought of Leviticus 26. Leviticus 26, 23. I will read it to you. And if you are not instructed by me, by this, because he, he's talking about walking in his commands, and you walk contrary to me, then I also shall walk contrary to you, and I myself shall strike you seven times for your sins. Okay, so he's basically saying, if you walk contrary to me, I'll walk contrary to you. If right. you walk forsaking me, then I will forsake you. Right. I will turn. And you notice he says, in uh, back in Deuteronomy 31, 31, he's going to forsake them and hide his face. He's not leaving. But it's basically, you guys don't want to look at me. I don't want to look at you. And the more I read this, the more I studied, the more I thought, how merciful this is. Because he says in verse 18, And I shall certainly hide my face in that day because of all the evil which they have done. For they shall turn to other mighty ones. He is turning around because if he stayed facing them, they would be destroyed, completely mm -hmm. consumed. So he turns away. And it's only for a short time. We see that in Isaiah. We see that the prophets talk about how he turns away for a short time. He won't hear their prayers. But why? So that these curses can come upon them. So that they will then be like, wait, why is this happening? Uh, because we're not obeying. Right. Maybe we should return and repent. Which he he. The Lord in this is telling Israel, look, you're going to turn, but you're going to return to me. You're going to leave me and you're going to come back. And then we have so many patterns throughout all the Tanakh showing us how this has happened. Yep. So in actuality, the fact that he's turning so that they're not consumed is him not leaving them. It's another one of those psh things yeah. with the blessing and the curse. Because the very fact that he's doing that is what's allowing him to remain faithful to his word. Because he already said, if you do these things, these are the results. Right. So if he didn't turn and he looked at them, one, they'd be consumed. Or 
he would remain in their midst and then those curses wouldn't come and they'd be destroyed right yeah either way it's a bad ending for them right so while we look at this there's maybe like well you said you wouldn't leave forsake us but here you're saying you're forsaking them but in all actuality that forsaking is a separating a leaving but only for a short time so that what he already said would come would come bringing them back around to him yes so does that have any bearing on the new testament when yeshua says i will never leave you or forsake you oh that's a great question so let's think about that i mean pattern wise yeah i would think you have yahweh saying that here mm -hmm. to the children of israel and then you have yeshua saying it to his disciples Okay, so let me ask you this. What do you think? Do you think that oh, do you think that could have any application to the hard times that might come in the end, in the end that's going right? to drive them to repentance? Yes. Well, yeah, that's why that's kind of where I was going because we see in what is it? Matthew 7 where he says, "Many will come to me in that day and say, "Lord, Lord, we did all of these things." And he said, "I never knew I you." Never knew you turned right? from me. And right. that's the that's the exactly Right. Forsaking. That's right. Forsaking them. Yeah. Turn from me. Go. And then right after that is if you built on the rock, you did my commands. Right. You're safe. If you didn't do my commands, you're not safe. And right. again, you know, that's one thing I really noticed. I think one of the big pivotal moments we have between the Greek mindset and the his, um, Hebraic mindset is being able to come to turn that not everything's about eternal salvation. Right. There's a lot of things that just have to do with our usefulness here on earth. Right. And the living life and death here on earth that we might have. And there's so much in tour that, that really is talking about here on earth, which, again, it's not the eternal aspect. When we get to Messiah, there's a lot of eternal aspects talking are being discussed because now Messiah has died and risen, so now the eternal is better understood so of course they're going to have more of a conversation about it they understand right. it more right did i say understand it yeah i did understood yeah. they understood it more so there was uh you could have a better conversation when you have more of an understanding right <laughs> absolutely right. But, I mean, that's how <laughs> i was thinking about that i was thinking about that just today uh when i was studying you know i can't remember what it was about but i i remember thinking that very same thing <laughs> yeah you know i guess it really does go back to the daniel 12 thing mm -hmm. as we go to the end that knowledge, knowledge increases. Increase, I mean, yeah. and it, we look. The truth is, knowledge is increasing because people are paying attention. Yeah, people are paying attention. And okay, so let's talk about that real quick. We see that there is supposed to be a reading of the um, Torah, right? Going mm -hmm. through the Word every seven years. You know, as I was listening to the audio version of the Torah portion today, it just kind of struck me. Wait a minute. We're always like, you need to study, you need to study. But that's nothing that we've done growing up in the churches to hear the Torah. Mm -hmm. We've right. never, I mean, and you know what? That's what's commanded. Right. To hear the Torah. Because that's the foundation of everything. Yet we've grown up with, yeah, being the Word, being the Word. Everything but the, but the key, Torah. Right. The very key to help us understand, understand the everything. Rest. We don't do, and that's the only part that's commanded. It's not make sure you read the Tanakh, make sure you read the New Testament, none of it. You read the seven, uh, every seven years, you read the first five books, what Moses wrote. Yes. You know, that would make sense because if, let's say that you only read the Torah okay. and you didn't read anything else, okay. it would still be relevant today. Absolutely. I mean, we just right? read it today. today. Mm -hmm. And by reading the rest of it, you just get more of the puzzle, more of the patterns. You get to actually see the patterns played out. When in our actuality, we know from Paul that everything that happened in the Torah is what we're supposed to learn from. Right. Absolutely. And that makes me think of a holograph. You know, like we have the one dimensional. Right. That's Torah. I mean, yeah. Torah's all dimensions. But for my explanation. Just, yeah, yeah. just for my pretend explanation. explanation. <laughs> so we have the front. And then as we get the rest, the the rest of the Tanakh and the Brit Hadashah, now we can turn it and we see more dimensions. But it doesn't mm -hmm. remove any of this importance. Right. Because right. if that was gone, then the others just, you, you really don't have a, a good, clear picture. Right. But you can have a clear, think about it, you can look at a picture 
a two-dimensional thing, like, wow, that's a good picture. Mm -hmm. And then when you see the person in real life, you're like, yeah, you look just like that picture. But now I can see, oh, you have a birthmark back here, or you can see other things. Yes. But if I don't have a picture, I have a picture in the back of your head, you're like, yeah, yeah, I thought that was you. I wouldn't sure. turn around. Oh, it is you. Mm -hmm. You don't have that instant um, recognition that we have when we study the Torah. All right. If I've talked about this before, I apologize. But I'm doing it again because I think repetition it's really good. That's right. Repetition is important. So in the beginning of this week in Deuteronomy 29, it talks about we're all standing here and it's for this generation. And we know it's also for the generation to come. But he says this interesting thing in verse 11. It says, um, it's talking, listening to everyone who's there, your little ones, your wives, your sojourners who are in the midst of your camp and those who cut your wood and those who draw your water. So that they, so that you should enter into covenant with the Lord your God and into His oath, which the Lord your God makes with you today. Well, you know, there's a whole bunch of other jobs out there: woodcutters and water bearers. Yeah. What about tent makers? Or what about um, the moms and the dads taking care of kids? The nursery workers. The you know, right, I mean, right, right. There's so many. How about the Levites? How about I don't know the herdsmen. There are a lot of... The plowmen. Yeah, the plowmen. They, they're, they're bringing food for Israel. Mm -hmm. Why not them? Well, this is the Lord saying, I know what's going to happen. And later you're going to have the V8 moment whenever you've been in the land for a while. Again, just testifying that I knew what was going to happen on. Let's go to Joshua 9. The story here is um, every, they've gone into the land. Everyone is aware that they're about to be taken out mm -hmm. because they're not with Israel. Um, but they also understand that the co to be in covenant with Israel or the living God was irreversible. Mm -hmm. Because that is the true meaning of what a king does. If you think about the story of Esther, that's why the decree to um, destroy the Jews couldn't be reversed. But the Jews could now be allowed to fight and they knew ahead of time. Because the law of the land, the king's word is, you can't break it. You, you can't change right. it. So here's what happens. They, this group, they come and they act like they come from very, very far away mm -hmm. and um, to go in covenant. So in 14 it says, And the men of Israel took some of their food, so they're partaking with them, and they did not ask the mouth of Yove. They didn't ask the Lord. They just did this. Did it. All right. And it says, um, so basically they make peace, they do all this, and then they find out, oh, you're our neighbors. We're supposed to destroy you. Okay, well now they're like, Lord, what do we do? We're supposed to destroy. We're going to destroy them. I was like, no, because then that'll be taking my name in vain and destroying yours. So this is what I'm going to do. In verse 21, it says, and the ruler said to them, let them live, but let them be woodcutters and the drawers of water for all the congregation as the rulers had promised them. Okay, so they're taking these people. They're going to let them live. But you know what their jobs are? To draw water and cut wood. For the tabernacle. Mm. Now, the reason Just why like I the re, yes, the reason why I think this is fascinating is because if we go back to Deuteronomy twenty nine, and we look a little further down, he's talking about how the Lord's making a covenant with them. Okay, and then he goes into in seventeen how now look sixteen and seventeen when you go in through these nations and you see what they're doing, don't bring that in. Don't start bringing in their worship. Don't start acting like them. We had the exact opposite that's happened with the woodcutters and the water. They were of the nations. Mm -hmm. They came in willing to give up all their gods to worship the living God and are quite happy, we see in Joshua 9, they were quite happy and pleased to be slaves, to be servants to the Most High God. Yeah. That's what Israel gets in trouble for later. They're like, eh, I don't want to be a servant to the Most High God. What about your God? <laughs> and right. so the Lord allows the these two groups to be named who later become an example to this very generation mm -hmm. yeah, of how the good. nations, when they see how they're supposed to live, are going to want to come in and won't care if they're seen as, um, you know, not important work, which really they are. I mean, come on, they're in the temple and the Lord even names them. Anyway, I just love how he's showing them this little nugget that they're not even going to get at this time. It's going to be later. And 
there are things like that in with the Brit Harshaw, still even in the Torah and the Tanakh that we're not going to get. But as we come to that moment, we'll go back and go, oh, I get it. Right. The eight moment. Exactly. And that's exactly what happened, we know, with the disciples. When Yeshua was saying things to them, they're like, we don't, we don't understand. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until he was already raised and gone that they're going, oh, it may, now we see it. So we're still doing that. I don't believe in any way are we at a point, and I don't mean we as in Julie, I mean we as in the body of being able to go, oh, well, we get it. Yeah, right. Nothing right. new to learn. Oh, my gosh. Every no. year that's proven yeah, wrong. Yeah, every, every day. Year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We learn something that's, that, that becomes more and more alive. Mm-hmm. Well, we thank you for joining us today for this week, and we hope you have a great mm-hmm. uh, day and the rest of the week. And we'll see Julie on the flip side with the Prophets. Shalom. But that's how we probably should be. The end of the world as we know it. That's right. End of the world as you know it. It's the end of the world as we We know know it. it. And we'll be fine. We'll be fine. (laughs) (laughs) Because we have Yeshua on our side. That's why.